the public space. Barista, um, if you're ready, I think I'll just go straight. What are the issues that you see emerging this time around with respect to uh, Ibrahim Magu's travails as the leader with the leadership of the Economic Financial Crimes Commission of Nigeria, the arrowhead of anti-corruption in this country? Barista. Hello. Barrister, you're on, discussing the renewed onslaught, so to speak, on, uh, I mean, against Ibrahim Mount. Okay. You're on now, Barrister, I mean, sir. Okay, uh, I think we're having a, a connectivity problem at this point. Uh, we'll take a short break and return in just a while. Welcome to the show, Democracy in Practice. We're looking at a, an emerging issue at the moment that has to do with the fight against corruption in Nigeria. This is one area that a lot of Nigerians and indeed the entire global community is interested in uh, seeing how Nigeria goes about it and handling it. And those who are charged with the responsibility of achieving success in Nigeria's fight against uh, corruption. Just of recent, the issue surrounding this and uh, the leadership of the Economic Financial Crimes Commission of uh, the country has been on, within the public space generating so much issues. There is a seeming onslaught all over again against the chairman, acting chairman of that agency. Ibrahim Magu. This is an ongoing running issue for quite some time now. This is the issue we're looking at in, uh, on the program as we engage the various emerging matters arising, uh, is, uh, various issues emerging and the, the matters arising thereof. I'm joined by Barrister Menasara Kugo Omar, who is uh, a public affairs analyst, uh, Abuja based. Uh, legal practitioner. Barrister, you're most welcome. Thank you very much. Good evening. 
Right. I mean, these are the, uh, some of the issues. How do you understand the issues surrounding the, uh, the emergence of serious issues again uh, relating to the leadership of the Economic Financial Crimes Commission uh, in, in the country? If, if Brian Mabu is yet again on the hot seat. What are your feelings about this uh, situation yes, that is emerging? Uh, 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 we have to look at it like a, it is trying to become a stereotype tradition. It is going to be a stereotype tradition because virtually all the subsequent, I mean, previous leadership of the EFTC uh, have ended up as a result of one corrupt allegation or the other. In other words, it ended up as a case of a hunter being hunted, but the same instrument he is using in hunting other animals. Now, if you look at it very well, it is a moment of triumph because uh, democracy or rather the fight against corruption is getting more mature. Uh, it is showing that there is no second cow in the fight against corruption. Uh, if you look at it very well, uh, the law is very clear. Uh, 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 section 171, subsection 1 and 2, gives the Attorney General of the Federation the power to commence any investigation at the same time to prosecute anybody that is being accused on account of any misgiving or on account of any wrongdoing as far as matters of criminality is concerned. Now, Attorney General of the Federation recently wrote a memorandum to the President uh, alleging over 20 different types of misdeeds. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, Barrister, let me, let, let, let me just interject there. Sorry, uh, Barrister, let me just interject there. We'll come to the, those misdeeds, alleged misdeeds uh, put together by uh, the Attorney General. But for now, now this uh, renewal of the onslaught against uh, uh, Ibrahim Magu, what do you make of it at this particular point in time in the country? What does it, what does it really portend? The point is that it is trying to establish that there is no second cow in the fight against corruption. That no matter how highly placed you are, no matter what position you are holding, if there is any accusation against you, especially something that has to do with the criminal in nature, nobody is above the law. So it establishes two things. One, that uh, the doctrine of nobody is above the law, and then the power of the president as per section 32, subsection 1, to make regulations on matters related to fundamental rights and the enforcement of rights regarding the citizens' interests has been entrenched. And the president now is right by establishing a panel instead of allowing the Attorney General, since the Attorney General is the have initial petitioner against the acting chairman of the EFT. So the president now decided to make this section 32, subsection 1, that appointing a new power panel headed by the former. Chief Justice of uh, the court of, uh, President of the Court of Appeal. This is uh, for in the right direction so that the accused, the, the person writing the petition will not be the one to even investigate. It is the spirit of lateral justice that has been okay. as per section 36 of the Constitution of the Federal Court of Appeal. Okay, now let's, let's look at, uh, before we look at the, the wider issues, uh, the, the petition by the Attorney General of the Federation. 20 critical and strong items on that tab. Uh, yeah. at, the, at the risk of uh, being a bit maybe prejudicial or contemptuous, can we discuss this openly? Uh, I think you've really followed those 20 items. Uh, do they hold water? Yes, I, 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 I did follow all the items, but I think it would be so design for us to discuss the items because they are the subjects upon which is being interrogated currently by the panel. So I, I, I think we should skip it for now. Okay. Uh, because uh, 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 whatever opinion we give, we give credence to the possible outcome of the panel's activities. Okay. So let not now, let's that. look at the panel itself, the presidential panel. Is it the right move in, in the direction that this nation desires? It is the right move because, constitutionally speaking, uh, the Attorney General, like I said, as for the provision of 174 uh, subsections 1 and 2, the Attorney General of the Federation has the right to really commence investigations on any matter of that such nature. But in a situation whereby the Attorney General himself is the person that raised the accusation, then the doctrine of natural justice would say that uh, you cannot be a judge in your own course. 
Therefore, judges in court as well. That's then it. it comes into play. And that is the reason why the president perhaps was advised to exploit the window of section 32, subsection 1, by making regulations on matters related to some the form of the constitution of the federal government of Nigeria. I think it is something in order so that the person making the accusation will not be the one to investigate the accusation. It is the spirit of natural justice in order. Okay, uh, uh, Barrister, why we, we, we seemingly want to cocoon this matter as being between Magu and the Attorney General? It's beyond these two uh, uh, individuals, isn't it? We seem to be saying, okay, uh, the Attorney General is the petitioner, the accuser, and that's why we need a third force in, 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 the, in the gap of the presidential panel. Are we not reducing the veracity of the issues of corruption that this matter uh, puts in the public domain? Yes. When, when, you, when we look at it in accordance with the provision of section 15, of section 5 of the Constitution, provides that the state shall fight all forms of corrupt practices and abuse of power. The state here means whosoever is holding position of responsibility on behalf of the government and the people of Nigeria. The Attorney General here is not in his individual capacity as a broken mandamin, as a head, but in his position as the chief law officer of the entire 200 plus million Nigerian. So it is not Attorney General as our individual in that context. It is the totality of the Nigerians by the office of the Attorney General, the chief law officer of the Federation that is filing that uh, 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 petition. And at the same time, it is not just the very mango alone. But the way the EFTC is still run, if we take, for example, Section 12, Part of the 1B of the Mutual Legal Assistance Treaty, yeah. Yeah. of which Nigeria is a signatory. We will not be partners in international uh, relations regarding matters of fight against corruption or repatriation of the loot if we don't sanitize our mechanism of fight against corruption domestically. So it is in that context I, I really look at it as something that is uh, justifiable, something that is correct, something that is in order. It is very, very important when there are allegations against you. Remember that you no matter how grievous are uh, allegations against anybody, he is presumed innocent and is not guilty. That's it. This is the of the process. When the process continues to more individuals, to officers, to personalities that are involved in whatever allegations will be brought to testify, and that is where you will discover that it is beyond the matter of Ibrahim Mabu or Abu Bakr Mabu. Okay. Well, look, look. Look at this. Uh, at the onset of this discussion, you used a phrase that uh, it shows the triumph of uh, the efforts by Nigeria to yeah. uh, to rework itself on the path of probity, on the path of integrity, and the, yeah. the path. Okay. Now, do you uh, are you s still speaking in that light that with two institutions of government, in this case? Um, the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation and the EFCC uh, coming, I mean, seeming to be at, I will excuse the term, it seeming to be a dagger's drawn. Of course, they are also the angle of the National Assembly, uh, the Senate and all whatnot. Then, of course, there is the presidency itself. Mm. These are different institutions that are putting their best foot forward in this matter. Is that kind of triumph you're talking about? Yes, if we look at it constitutionally, the power of the National Assembly, the legislature, the power of lawmaking, uh, is entrained in Section 4, Section 11, and Section 58, or Section 1 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And these two officers have been subject of a lot of controversial uh, 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 presentations before the National Assembly member. So it is very, very apt that uh, this matter is coming at a time when Really, people expected that uh, nothing short of this will happen because there are a lot of uh, 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 in fighting, uh, organizational in fighting, either between the office of the Attorney General or at the National Assembly, or between the office of the Chairman of the EFCC at the National Assembly, or between the office of the Attorney General and the Chairman of the EFCC. There have been all these problems, but the first thing that this thing has brought about is that. That the 32 of the one has really done that. You remember, even where you have a 
divinity that he has 300 against. The governors, deputy governors, president and vice president, the divinity clause, I must just it for the benefit of educating the Nigerians, did not prevent somebody to be invited like Mabu is now invited, for him to come and answer questions whether or not certain allegations. So he is not for anything to preserve the documentary evidence and other things that we can collect and be kept and assembled. I heard of the time when his general will be appearing so that when the fail of him getting the power of a uh, immunity will be removed. So it is important any officer that is uh, having any blame in something will be invited periodically to be accountable to be given the answers on various questions so that those documents, those explanations will be gathered and be checked. So that by the time he now leaves office, it will be very easy in front of for him to be done. So nobody okay. is above the law, that is the point I'm making. Nobody should be seen to be above investigation. Because right. at the level of investigation that I said, he is still presumed innocent because he has not been adjudged uh, uh, by the competent court of law. So we look forward to seeing where the opponent's activities will end. Well, uh, and then the important thing is if he has been arrested or he has been detained when he has suspended, they should try as far as I'm concerned to go in tandem with the percentage of the constitution, but I don't think it's important a competence of law so that okay. I will be able to see what adjudication, what would be the outcome of that arrangement so that at the end of it we will not be able to see that yes, justice is now being uh, yes, uh, allowed to play over whatever is coming up. So or, or between the institutional power players at the end of it, it is a rule of law that will be prevent because at the end of it, whosoever is found guilty will be penalized and uh, it will be a deterrent for those people. Well, that Barrister, that, that, that is actually the... That is actually the expectation of, of Nigerians. As it is, uh, it's an evolving issue. Uh, we wouldn't want to seem uh, prejudicial, uh, but this matter is already in the public space and therefore within the public court. Um, there are some of the salient issues that are of concern to the public, almost also even agitating the public. This whole thing is about corruption and the leadership to drive it out of the Nigerian psyche. Uh, for, for a while now, the public is replete with so much figures of monies collected, uh, people arrested, and all whatnot. Now the question is, nobody has been able to fully, properly, accurately account for these funds that have been retrieved and where they are, where are these monies kept? Are you concerned about these issues? Where is money? How much is it? Who is keeping them? What is it going to be used for? These are some of the issues that we really want to know. What's your take about this concern? It is really understood the Nigerian public that the victim of sincerity and probity that the government is clamoring about. And then it is on that basis upon which the integrity and the charisma of Nigeria in the Committee of Nations will keep diminishing. Because a lot of money has been recovered, nobody is practically on ground. And there would not have been any justification whatsoever for the government to keep borrowing money, to keep being an, an indebted nation in a situation whereby we are getting such much of money. There must be a mechanism abroad by the government. In fact, when we take it even by the constitutionally speaking, Every cover that is supposed to be a revenue for the Federation of Nigeria is supposed to add initial go into the consolidated revenue fund. It is not supposed to even be done without it getting into the fund, without it getting into appropriation. But in the situation where wise of people have now established a tradition of whatever comes in the now appropriated and spend it, whether it's as a result of the fear of the Federal Executive Council resolution or whatever other resolution. We want to please read in this report next to the constitutional committee. It is very important for the government to really explain the way this kind of thing is going on, investigate up to date. From 1999 to date, how much has been recovered, from what source, by whom, where has it been kept, how much is the remaining, who is the custodian of the money. We must see case running down. If we really are serious about the fight corruption, if we really want the world to believe that the really fight against corruption is a cardinal agenda of this government. We want to see actions, not just uh, an issue of investigation. It should go beyond that. We should start seeing some head roll running down of those entrusted with the responsibility of managing the public institutions 
of, 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 of uh, uh, fight against Trump. So okay. when we see such type of things that they are Nigerians will be sacrificed and then accountability will be on board and then the international community too will really appreciate and appraise Nigeria as a leading nation in the in the African well, thank you very much. Uh, we, some of the issues arising from the seeming renewed onslaught against the uh, acting chairman of the Economic Financial Commission uh, in Nigeria, Brian Mabu, especially uh, in the light of uh, new allegations of, raised by the Attorney General and the setting of a press, press panel to look into these issues as, as they are. It's an issue, and we have been uh, getting the, the, the views of uh, uh, Abuja-based legal practitioner, Barrister Umar uh, Maynasera. Uh, he's an, a public affairs analyst uh, who is very conversant with the issues of uh, constitutional law. Uh, uh, for all. Now, well, we are not done yet. Um, there's this, there's this. For some now, uh, the Abu CC and the fight corruption has been on. Okay. Let it take the uh, public. Yeah. concerned about the integrity of the process. What do you see becoming different this time around? Yeah. Is there yeah. any, are you optimistic that something different will be, will happen this time around? Because it's a round robin issue. It's not just letting and we're not resolving it. Yeah. The number one lesson to be learned is to be learned. The trust and confidence in Ibrahim Mabu. So much that he is virtually the only one person to chair the anti graph board. Uh, even to the to, to, to the disregard of the various resolutions of the National Assembly members. Now Magu has ended up like this and I choose getting uh, against the institution he is supposed to hold in trust. So the president should take this as a very important lesson that it is not so much his own yard team of measure of confidence that he is really going to be the to Nigeria's problem. The president should really calibrate the those believe that he has completely confidence in them beyond the issue of his own personal trust and the standard of personal knowledge. So we are seeing a lot of this a lot of Are we going to see any change? Do you see the president heeding the this change, advice? The, the, change, the change we are envisaging will be predicated upon whether or not as a investigation there will be any light in the Thank you. 
into the appropriate uh, institutional mechanism for them to uh, So we need to see. Islami in any difference. That's number one. Number two, can what can the people, the public, uh, uh, civil society, and every other patriotic interest group in this country do? This thing blows up and blows over in Nigeria. I also will be difference. Well, thank you very much, uh, but, sir. Um, I've also had this issue. Only the police or people need to raise it. We, we just hope that at the end of the day, to call the Nigerian people. If you call the personnel, you see, there's secret I don't 
All right. Um, as we uh, discussion, this was a question. So, uh, define the law and uh, into what is going on in 23 just a curious question hello virus yes okay i said be element of integrity and what is a bit between what moment yeah, with 20 permutations Their evaluation, one way or the other. What is going on at the moment and 2023? No, election 2023. I cannot say that I don't know those that the politics. Uh, I'm an analyst for nature.